Welcome back friends. This is the video regarding photosynthesis. In this video we will be discussing about a basic overview of photosynthesis. The photosynthesis is a physical chemical process that occurs in chlorophyll containing organisms. So what this photosynthesis process actually is? If we break the terms two apart we get the phototone and on the other side we have synthesis. The phototome includes the light part. Why we see the organisms use the energy of photons to drive the synthesis of organic compounds like carbohydrates. So photo which includes the trapping of energy harnessing the solar energy and the other part that is the synthesis where this energy is used to drive the synthesis of organic compounds like glucose in plants. So we see the chlorophyll containing organisms make use of solar energy to drive the synthesis of organic compounds and ultimately from these organic compounds we get the energy and some part of is used for other physiological processes also. If we see this photosynthesis from the energy point of view we see it is the transformation of light energy that is the energy of photon into chemical energy. Now let's see what are these chlorophyll containing organisms. The green plants are the first ones to drive the photosynthesis. Then we have algae and finally there are some prokaryotes, the bacteria that can drive the photosynthesis and these are called cyanobacteria. Now let's see what are the reactants, what are the ingredients needed for the photosynthesis to occur in plants. First of all the primary molecule needed for this complex process is the carbon dioxide which these plants get from atmosphere. The second important molecule is the water molecule H2O needed for this photosynthesis process. The carbon dioxide molecule acts as a source of carbon while as the water molecule in this reaction is the final electron donor. Now the plants have these molecules to start from and in order to initiate the reaction the plants have chlorophyll pigment in the chloroplasts that captures the light energy in the form of photons. And after the reaction gets finished, we get the organic compounds plus some other gaseous molecules. The overall chemical reaction can be written as CO2 plus H2O and the energy for this reaction is from photons which are absorbed by chlorophyll molecules. So from this CO2 and H2O, we get the CH2O that is the carbohydrate plus we get water molecule and the important molecule we get from this reaction is the oxygen molecule. But it must be noted here the oxygen molecule is not the primary product of the reaction rather it is the byproduct. Now let's balance the equation. We can use the n number of carbon dioxide reacts with n number of water molecules that gives us H2O n plus n number of water molecules plus n number of oxygen molecules. And in simple terms we can cancel out the water molecule since water is both a reactant in the light dependent reaction and a product of light independent reaction. So cancelling n water molecules from each side gives the net equation. That's CO2 plus H2O that gives us CH2O plus O2. This is the net equation when we cancel out the water molecule. In plants we see it's basically the glucose molecule that's getting produced. So the equation becomes carbon dioxide plus water that gives us sugar that's glucose plus the oxygen molecule. Now let's jump towards the stages of photosynthesis process which are based on the reactions occurring in a sequential manner. So the reactions of photosynthesis are categorized into two types. First is the light dependent reactions and second is the light independent reactions. Before we discuss these reactions, let's see the site of reactions inside the cell. There are specialized cell organelles in phototrophs called as chloroplasts, which contain this chlorophyll pigment. And the light dependent reaction occurs in the thylakoid membranes of thylakoids, which are the membrane bound compartment inside the chloroplasts and cyanobacteria. While as the light independent reactions occurs in stroma of the chloroplast. Looking at the structure of chloroplast, there are different structures. We have thylakoids, there is a lamella connecting between the two stacks of thylakoids and there is also a fluid medium in which all these structures are embedded, what we call as stroma. And it's these thylakoid membranes 
where light dependent reactions occurs and the stroma is for the light independent reactions. Now we will have a brief overview of light dependent reactions. They are called so because these reactions need light energy to occur. The light dependent reaction occur in thylakoid membrane which involves different type of protein molecules. The major ones are Photosystem 1 that's plastocyanin pyridoxine oxidoreductase. It's called Photosystem 1 only because it was the first photosystem to be discovered. Then we have the Photosystem 2nd water plastoquinine oxidoreductase. It is the first photosystem in the reaction order. It's called Photosystem 2nd only because it was the second photosystem to be discovered. And also there are electron acceptors and electron carriers to drive the electron transport chain. And there is also oxygen evolving complex attached to photosystem second which evolves the oxygen from the photolysis of water. The light dependent phase is the photochemical process. Since there is involvement of photons that is the light energy and also there is production of chemical energy in the form of ATP. At first in the light dependent reaction there is a photo excitation of PS2 electrons which supplies the resonance energy in the electrons and finally ejects the electron from the reaction center. Then we see there is a photolysis of water molecule in light dependent reactions. The first function of the photolysis of water is to stabilize the photosystem too because it is deficit of an electron which has been ejected from the photo excitation. And the photolysis of water also evolves the oxygen. The third important thing we see is the photo excitation ejects the electron into a journey called electron transport chain which later on creates proton gradient and from this the chemiosmosis occurs which involves the ATP generation. And finally we have the reduction of NADP positive into the NADPH from light dependent reactions. So ultimately we get two things from the light dependent reactions that are needed for the light independent reactions. First is the ATP molecule, second is the NADPH which we use it for the Kelvin cycle that is the light independent reactions. Previously named as dark reactions, which is now an invalid term to use since these reactions occur around the clock also. These kind of reactions does not need light energy to occur. Rather, these reactions use energy produced from the light reaction that's ATP and NADPH. This phase is the biosynthetic phase which involves the carbon fixation by Rubisco enzyme. And from this carbon fixation, the plants drive the synthesis of glucose molecules, that's the organic compounds. So this is how the phototrops harness the light energy to synthesize the organic compounds. This is all about the overview of photosynthesis. In the next part of the video, we'll be discussing about light dependent reactions in detail. I hope you like the video. If you like it, give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe this channel. Thanks.